Ever since the thalidomide scandal of the 1960s, when a treatment for morning sickness led to birth defects in thousands of children, society has looked to drug regulators to vouch for the safety of our medicines. But there's also pressure on those same regulators to provide the fastest possible pathway for groundbreaking new drugs to reach patients. I'm joined by Ema Cook, Head of International Affairs at the European Medicines Agency, to discuss how Europe's drug regulator is working with counterparts in the US and beyond to find a balance between safety and innovation. Ema, thanks very much for, for joining us. We're seeing a push on both sides of the Atlantic to bring fast-track processes uh, that can get drugs to patients more quickly. Uh, tell us what the EMA is doing uh, and how can we be sure that this isn't going to compromise safety? Thank you, Andrew. Yes, uh, we have launched a new scheme. It's called the Priority Medicine Scheme. Uh, we abbreviate it as PRIME. And this is about getting innovative medicines to patients who have unmet medical needs. So that's maybe a, a, a rare cancer, even a common disease such as diabetes, there are some patients that won't actually have their needs met by the, the existing treatments. Uh, what we want to do, first of all, we're, we're going to evaluate any applications to see if they meet these criteria. And then we're going to, to give extra regulatory support to make sure that the clinical trials that are performed are actually the best clinical trial to, to answer the questions for drug regulation. How does it compare with the schemes, the fast track schemes, the breakthrough schemes that, that we're seeing from the US FDA? Yeah, so the breakthrough scheme, uh, there are different, we operate in different legislative processes. Um, I would say that we've got the same aim in, in mind. We want to get innovation to patients that wouldn't get it otherwise. Now, industry complains about the, the differences that often exist between the different regulatory regimes and they have to design different trials for different geographies and this increases the cost of drug development and ultimately increases the cost of drugs. Uh, to what extent can we see more cooperation to reduce that du duplication, particularly between the EMA and the FDA? Well. Um, I'm always a little bit disheartened when people tell us that this is, you know, that this is a major concern because actually we're working very, very closely with FDA on a daily basis. We also work in areas such as ICH, the International Council on Harmonisation, which looks at harmonising the guidelines that support the drug development process. And both um, EMA and FDA are very active in, in, in ICH. And we have a procedure called Parallel Scientific Advice where a company can actually come to both of us and we'll, give, we'll collaborate on a specific product and we'll give scientific advice on the clinical trial package in parallel. So is there still a, a reason, therefore, to have separate regulators uh, in the US and Europe? Why not have a, a one-stop shop for global regulation? In Europe, we're trying to, to make a decision for the European patients. We have to take into account local healthcare systems, medical culture, um, various, uh, what else is on the market? It may not be the same as what else is on the market in the US and there certainly will be different healthcare systems. So we have to, t these things have to be taken into account. Um, I think we can learn a lot from each other. I think we can work together. Um, I think I would see us as a sort of a peer review um, system rather than, uh, you know, one side taking over. And I would see that, you know, what we would, where we would, should be going or where we, we, we would like to go is more reliance on what, what the other re regulator does rather than duplicating. I can't let you go without asking you very quickly about Brexit. You're based in the, in the UK, in Canary Wharf. Um, the EMA uh, stands to be affected uh, quite significantly if the UK voted to leave the EU. Um, how would Brexit affect the regulation of drugs in Europe? Well, I mean, the, the question of Brexit and the referendum is a question for the, for the British people and we'll find out how that goes on the 23rd of June. But presum it, it's pre not really our job to speculate about that. But presumably the EMA sees benefits uh, that have, have come from the, uh, the joined up nature of, of drug regulation uh, in the European Union. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm passionate about European drug regulation. We've, we've, we've got a wonderful, strong system based on 28 different member states. We can bring the best expertise from Europe together to make the best decisions for patients. Ima Cook, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Andrew.